Okay, so now let's do a depth first search on this DAG. You start with A, push it onto the stack, so A1, and from A visit B, so push it onto the stack, so B2, and from B you go to F, F3, and then from F you cannot go anywhere else, so you pop it out of the stack, and um, then you backtrack to B, from B you go to G, you push it onto the stack, 4, and from G you go to H, which is, you push it onto the stack number 5, and then you cannot go anywhere else from H, so you pop it out, it's the second vertex to be popped out of the stack, and then you backtrack to G, you cannot go anywhere else, so you pop it out of the stack, that's the third vertex, and then from B you cannot go anywhere else, so pop it out, and then you go back to A, from A you can visit E, so push it onto the stack, now you see you can visit F from E, but F is already pushed and popped out, so F is going to be a forward edge. Uh, then you pop out E from the stack, and then you go to A, you don't have anything else to do. Actually you can visit F2, and F is again pushed and popped out already, so this becomes a forward edge again. And then you pop out A. So now you are left with C and D, these are the two vertices that are yet to be visited or explored so you explore starting from C and uh, you push it onto the stack so that's the seventh node and then you visit D from C push it onto the stack and then you see here um, you can visit H you can visit H from D but um, D and H are in different components, so um, this edge becomes a cross edge. And then you pop out D, you go back to C, and you can visit G from C, but again C and G are in different components, so this is a cross edge. Alright, so now you pop out C. Now you write the vertices in the reverse order in which you traversed, so the reverse order means starting from number 8. That is the last vertex that we popped out of the stack. So C, and then D, and then A, E, B, F, G, H. Ah, oh, sorry. Uh, B, and then G, and then H, and then the last, the first vertex we popped out of the stack was F. That's what this here. So you write it in the reverse order. Now, if it is difficult to look, uh, visualize in the reverse order, write first in the increasing order from F h and so on but you don't really need this ordering you don't really need this what we need is this list the vertices in the reverse order in which they have been popped out of the stack okay so the last node that was popped out of the stack is the first node on the list all right and the first node that was popped out of the stack is the last node in the list so this is what is called a topological sort of the vertices and as you see here the key property of topological sort is if there is an edge in the DAG then um, say if there is an edge from A to B like in this case then A has to appear somewhere before B in the topological sort as you see here A appears before B you cannot have A appearing after B in the topological sort if there is an edge from A to B any edge you pick up C to D C appears before D G to H G appears before H E to F E appears before F. For any H, they may not be adjacent to each other in the topological sort, but somewhere um, uh, in this, uh, like this, E appears before F. Okay, you, can, you cannot have the other way. All right. So that's a very important property of topological sort. So now we are going to look at what is called the necessary and sufficient condition uh, for a DAG to be. Um, uh, uh, which means what we want to prove is <coughs> uh, if you want to generate a topological sort on a directed graph the necessary and sufficient condition is the directed graph has to be a DAC which means it should not have cycles okay so let's first start with the necessary condition which means it is necessary for a directed graph to be a direct cyclic graph in order for you to be able to generate a topological sort Right. So the way we prove that is assume the contradiction that there could be a cycle, something like this, u1, u2, u3 up 
u k and then u one. So you start with u one and then you visit all the vertices like u two, u three, and so on up to u k, and then you come back to u one. If that is the case, then if you say that, you can still argue that um, I can generate a topological sort. Again, the topological sort means what? Uh, if there's an edge from u to v, right, then u should appear somewhere before v in the topological sort. So if you have a kind of a cycle like this, then u1 should appear before u2 somewhere in the topological sort. Likewise, u2 should appear before u3 somewhere in the list and so on. But in if that is the case, then uk should appear before u1 somewhere in the list. Right. Uh, <clears throat> so u1 should appear before u2, u2 should appear before u3, and uk should appear before u1. So you see now it's something like this. So on up to uk, and uk should appear before u1 means u1 should follow uk, right? When I, say, when I say UK should appear before U1, it means UK should appear before U1, something like this. Then U1 has to follow UK somewhere down the list, but U1 is already in the list, right? So you can have a node only once in the topological sort. If it's already listed here, you can't have U1 again here, which means U1 should appear somewhere before UK in the list, something according to this, right? So it's a contradiction. Right, so if there is a cycle, you cannot list the vertices according to the property of topological sort. What is the property of topological sort? If there's an edge from u to v, u should appear somewhere before v in the topological sort. Okay, so that is the proof for necessary condition. Now, let's look at the proof for sufficient condition. What we mean by sufficient condition again, it is sufficient for a for a directed graph to be a directed cyclic graph in order for us to be able to write a topological sort of the directed graph. So let's look at let's consider an edge u to v. Okay. So again, by definition, u should appear before v in the topological sort. Let's assume the contradiction. What? Uh, that v can appear before u in a topological sort right if v appears before u uh, look at that example that we just did um, con consider uh, the two vertices a and g right uh, you see here a appears before g Right? Why? Because we started with A, we went and uh, kind of uh, visited G and we popped it out, right? So when we popped out G, A was still in the stack, right? When we popped out G, A was still in the stack. So similarly, consider A and B. When we popped out B, right, uh, which is the fourth node to be popped out, a was still in the stack because A is the sixth in order to be popped out. All right, so which means what? There is a path. If A appears before B, A appears before G, right? There is a path within that component. There is a path from A to B, or there's a path from A to G. So if V appears before U in the topological sort, and U and V are the same component, right? So there is a path from V to U, but but what that path does not involve the direct edge U to V. Why? <clears throat> because if V appears before U, 
this edge u to v is not yet explored right because when v appears before u u has been already what uh pushed as less popped out of the stack so this edge u to v is simply so which means there is a path something like this you can go from v to u but then you get back to v right so this is a cycle okay so if there is if v if there's an edge u to v and so if there's an edge from u to v and v appears before u in the topological sort then it implies what there is a cycle and if there's a cycle we know that whatever we have or uh, before we can say in the listing of vertices then we can say the listing of vertices is not a topological sort okay so if there's an edge from u to v and v appears before u in the listing of vertices it means as we argued there's a cycle and if there's a cycle the listing of vertices is not a topological sort now from um, uh, predicate logic if a implies b we can say what we can say not a uh, sorry, not b implies not a right so i can say from the above thing just reverse it the not of this is what not of this the listing of vertices is not a topological sort not of that is going to be if the listing of vertices has to be a topological sort not of this is going to be what there should not be a cycle that's what we proved just uh, in the previous case there should not be a cycle which implies what not of this uh, is an edge from u to v and v appears before you know if there is an edge from if there's an edge u to v uh, v should not appear before you that implies what if there's an edge from u to v then v oh sorry u should appear before v now this holds good for any edge u to v in the directed graph okay so for any edge u to v in the directed graph as long as there's no cycle u appears be u should appear before v in the listing of vertices and that's what we want for any edge u to v u should appear before v anywhere in the list right so it means we can generate a topological sort as long as there is no cycle you see that there should not be a cycle so this means that it is sufficient for a directed graph to not to have a cycle if that is the case then we will be able to have the vertices listed to satisfy the property of topological sort